Jumptron. Jacques, you think is something like something off there? We missing something? Nah, no, you're right. It's probably okay. Jacques, what is this? Where'd you learn to do this? Have you been doing seed? Back off, old timer. This is cool stuff. Jacques, come on, man. You're smarter than this. Winners don't do drugs. Remember? Just like all the arcades in the '80s told us. When I'm high, I feel like a winner. We gotta get you straight, Jack. Scared straight. You see this call? I'ma treat you like a bitch. You gonna call my Chester whenever I tell you. Okay, maybe not that straight. The date is October 14th, 1982. Drugs are rampant in the streets of the United States. President Ronald Reagan declares them a threat to national security. The following decades will be shaped by these actions forever, as the war on drugs continues to this very day. The message was clear. Remember! Winners don't do drugs! Remember when you'd play an arcade game back in the 80s or 90s? It would show you that screen before you played the game. Not to mention the numerous dare campaigns that would tour school to school. I mean, truth be told, we didn't even give it much thought as kids. I mean, it was just so ingrained in our collective unconscious. I mean, drugs were such a problem in the 70s and 80s. By the time we were growing up, this was just accepted and expected. Anyone living back then will be able to recall for you the wealth of PSAs on the topic that ranged from realistic to ludicrous. Who taught you how to do this stuff? You, alright? I learned it by watching you. <laughs> that, that never gets old. But that's not even scratching the surface. Have a look at this. Now, what's wrong with you? Tonsillitis? Appendicitis? Yeah! <laughs> You know what? I, I think you got a point there. It would be bad if my surgeon was smoking pot while operating on me. Here's a list of other things I wouldn't want him doing. Anything else but my fucking surgery! Now, let's see if I can still make a straight line. <laughs> You're really a piece of shit, aren't you? And then, of course, there's the one that lives in infamy. This is your brain on drugs. Any questions? Yeah, I, th I think I got a few. So you're telling me that my brain on drugs is a healthy, nutritious breakfast that helps my brain grow? Well, shit, I should do some drugs? How could the point not have been driven home? Even our celebrity idols were telling us that drugs were the spawn of Satan. It even got to the point when Hanna-Barbera and Pee Wee Herman were telling us to stay away. This is crack. You know, I'm just not sure how to deal with the emotions that come up after Pee Wee Herman tells me about crack rock cocaine. This guy! Just, just usher a serious warning to me with that look in his eyes. I, I, this is a state of national emergency. You see, Jacques? You're gonna find out one way or another. You gotta get off this stuff. I mean, Pee Wee Herman himself was so upset, he went into a dirty porno theater, jacked his wiener right off. Can you blame the man who's feeling emotional? He had to go make his dick cry. I'm still not convinced. Hey, little dude, send your mom and daddy out of the room. Oh, I live by myself, thanks. I don't got, I don't have parents anymore. You know who I am. Snake, dealing in weed, coke, crack, your choice. One of each, please. Take one hit and you'll do anything to cop more. Steal from your mama. Hey man, you get bit by like a mosquito or something? You don't look so good. Do I look like the kind of guy that would do that to a kid like you? You look like a snake! Yes! I'm basically half reptile, so he just reminds me of one of my brethren. Okay, yeah, all right, yeah, all right. You, you won't make this easy for us? That's fine. We'll take this to the only place you understand. To the world of video gaming. In the 80s, arcades were the cool hangouts for kids. They had Galaga, Donkey Kong, and of course, hard drug dealers. Now, what can I say? It was a sign of the times. Pac-Man popping pills, Mario's eating mushrooms, and Simon Belmont? Terrible off-screen addiction to heroin. Look at him in part four could barely hold his whip. It's sad, really. That made arcades a prime target for the anti-drug campaign, which led to the creation of games like NARC. In this game, you're assuming the role of a narcotics officer named Max Force. Oh, and if you get a second player in there, they can play as Hitman. Lord have mercy. I guess uh, nobody told me cops started doing wrestler names. I mean, not that I'm even upset. I just would have liked to know. Oh, this is great. Now we can finally teach kids good moral standards. 
sure fucks it. This would have put a tear in old Ronnie Reagan's eye. Well, all right, maybe those guys were just resisting arrest, you know? I mean, they had to be dealt with. After all, we're just going in there with enough firepower to protect ourselves. Not even once. That was amazing. Well, to be honest, I guess they were just trying to portray with utmost realism how we handle drug offenders in this country. You're a Cocaine is really popular with, um, the same guy. Too little, too late, talking leg. I'll be able to put an end to this drug ring once I fi figure out how to drive a stick. How's the, uh, what's it, how's a clutch work again? Finally, you get to the game's antagonist, Mr. Big, who's apparently a, a real good Tokyo drifter over here. He's got a picture of himself labeled me. Now, there's so many things wrong with this, I don't even know where to begin. I guess Lou Bega had some hard time getting work after Mambo number five. I've never seen a game go from a perfect zero to a perfect ten this quickly. Is this real life? Jack, I'm not gonna sugarcoat this for you. You gotta get with it, you gotta get clean. And to show you the light of the sober individual, we're gonna have to take the most extreme measure possible. Playing Wally Bear in the No Game. Under no circumstances would I do this otherwise. Because it's basically akin to torture. This is madness. Why is that bear not wearing a helmet on his skateboard? That's besides the point, Jock! This is officially your intervention. Welcome to Wally Bear and the No Gang. As you can see, the cartridge is kind of weird because it's not officially licensed by Nintendo. Also, on part of the label, there's a circle that says press here. And when you push it, it plays a Jeff Van Vonderen soundbite. We're gonna get you on a plane go to Florida. <laughs> I'm, I'm just playing with you, it doesn't do jack shit. Why is it here? Who was even out there manufacturing their own NES cartridges anyway? Oh, what is that? Chinese glue, mothballs? How many kids were in this before, huh? Probably got a disease now. This game was made in 1992 exclusively for a North American audience by American Video Entertainment. They're also known for such other classics as Blackjack, Puzzle, and of course, how can we forget dudes with attitude? So in short, that's how you know it's gonna be good. Wally Bear and the No Gang. Now I can already see him saying no to society's norms. Now as you can see, he does not wear his hat straight. No, it's perfect because if a drug dealer walks up to that side of his body, he, he doesn't have to say no to him, his clothes do it for him. Ah, what was the color palette on this one? Public restroom? Greens and browns, Jesus Christ. Uncle Gary Grizzly has been planning a party for you and the No Gang. Uh, hey, Dad, uh, I know you like to live your life on the free and easy, but do you think you could do, uh, do away with the whole no-pants thing till after I leave? Get a pair of tear-away pants or goddamn anything, for God's sake! Yeah, Wally, I know how you feel. My dad doesn't wear pants either. Dad! Invite all your friends and try to reach his house before dark. Take care, Wally, and remember to say no. Stay smart. Don't start. Don't start what? Fires? Okay, now that's a different bear. Kids, Wally Bear may have five lives, but you only have one. So the game starts out in this suburban town. You play as this bear named Wally, who rides his skateboard everywhere. Also, even though you play as an anthropomorphic bear, dogs are still dogs and birds are still birds. And I mean, I can't blame him for being mad. I'd be pissed too if no one transformed me into a radical sunglass-wearing skateboarding version of myself. Oh god, seriously, that's it? One hit and you're dead? If you die, you have to go all the way back, and each level is ridiculously repetitive and difficult. I think it's worth noting that GamePro gave this game a 5 out of 5 on the fun factor and the challenge. Sister Sinister, you're full of shit! Also, looks like they had a nightshade competition in this issue. Why'd no one tell me? I am gonna take that sitting down. The one saving grace is picking up what I assume to be a frisbee, or a, perhaps it's a one-way boomerang pie. Yeah, I don't know, something like that. When you get it, you can actually shoot the enemies and finally kill them. Even though it's still really hard because these birds are endless and you're just on a skateboard the whole time. Imagine, and no really, imagine this, if every level in a video game was the ice level. 
pets this game. And it's got platforming. Oh, my favorite. Now you can actually take one extra hit when you equip the frisbee. You can even just breeze through some of these levels if you just keep shooting in a straight line. But if you take any damage, the frisbee goes away and you can't throw it anymore, so you might as well reset. Because this game is nearly impossible without it. Also, I think somehow you can stack up to two frisbees and four hits using the skateboard as well, but I, I don't fucking know. Ricky Rat was trying to get Toby Turtle to join his gang. Who's Ricky Rat? Who's Toby Turtle? Who the fuck are you? He said Toby would have to take some pills. Oh, well, maybe I should go talk to Ricky Rat then and get some acetaminophen for the headache you're giving me right now. Yeah, by the way, uh, skateboarding on the train is most definitely encouraged, kids. Eventually, you make your way out of the subway, which was uh, in the suburbs, may I remind you. You find yourself in another neighborhood that looks exactly like the last one. Oh, okay, then you're supposed to go into another subway? How many subway connections I gotta make to get to my uncle's house? Maybe my parents could have given me a ride if they weren't so busy mauling each other's privates. Haynes, Levi's, Dockers, take a trip to the Gap, Dad, it's not that hard! Oh, okay, so this subway is a castle. Th this, this one's a, ca a castle. It's a castle. What? I think getting there before dark might have been the least of Wally's worries. Hey, Wally, you think you could have maybe, you know, taken a detour around this part of town? This guy's literally dropping bombs out of his window all day. That's, that's his job. Man, I guess the economy really has gotten bad. So, after you get out of the real, actual, demilitarized ghetto where no kid should ever be, you go into this MC Escher garage with a, a cat man. Okay, I, I think, uh, I think I might be getting a bit of a contact high from this. Where's my hands? I just saw a Larry Lizard going into this garage. Okay, wonderful, yet another person I have no context for. He was drinking out of a funny-looking bottle and acting really strange. It sounds like Larry's been drinking. Wow, how do you get that good? Remember, even grown-ups shouldn't drink and try. Now this really needed to be said. I mean, all those drunk driving kids were tearing this country apart. Huh, well, I'll assume this is Larry. Oops, I killed him. Moving on. All right, I have to admit, this time I've been caught off guard. How exactly did that door lead to this? Hey, Wally, don't forget to take the shortcut to Uncle Gary Grizzly's through the snake cave. It's right after the, uh, it's, it's coming to me. Uh, it's the bomb ghetto? Yeah, you'll find it. Don't worry about it. This part is impossible. There are just so many things, and there's huge platforming pitfalls everywhere. It would take anyone many, many tries to even get through this part. And don't forget, everything is an ice level. How did this teach kids anything when they couldn't even get to the end of the game to learn the frickin' message? What the fuck is this supposed to be? This game has a chronic condition of never explaining anything. Two minutes ago, we were in the suburbs. Now we're, what, taking a stroll through Nikolai Tesla's secret underground lair? Apparently, according to Wally, I gotta infiltrate a frickin' fortress just to get to my uncle's house. What the fuck? I promise I'll never do drugs again, Dad. By the way, this is literally the only room in the entire game that's like this. It's, it's so out of place. Frickin' Play-Doh's up here huckin' loogies down at me while I'm trying to balance the top pillars on a fucking skateboard! Ladies and gentlemen, this is art. There's a million doors here, and there's only one of them that leads to the way out! To get past this part, you just gotta keep relentlessly scaling the castle and trying doors until you find the right one. Come on, come on, come on, yes! Oh, finally! Watch out for a man giving away candy. Uh, are, are you aware that our city has an underground demon fortress in it? And apparently the subway just passes right through that shit. G give me the man. Give me the man right now. I'll, I'll take fucking candy right off his hands. It's amazing compared to what I've just been through. 
Oh, okay, yeah, that's fine. I just let's just resume then, huh? Back to business as usual, just trying to play it cool after the shit I've seen. Just gonna keep this secret nice and tucked away in my soul until it burns a hole through it! This must be what Buzz Aldrin felt like when he got back from the moon. Wait, this? I gotta go in there? What is this, a crack den? I thought I was supposed to be getting off drugs. This house's windows are broken. It doesn't even look like anyone's inhabited it for years. Also, the neighboring house is just completely blown up. Just blown half up. All right, here goes nothing. Is that, is that, is that my uncle? Is this my uncle? Oh, nothing wrong here. Just my uncle happens to live in Mad Max, and no one thought it was appropriate to tell me. So tell me, what's this? Uh, what's this award here on your shelf for? For uh, staying alive this long? And I'm not even gonna comment on your pants situation because the squalor you live in is astounding. Does anyone know you live here? Do you get? Do you get running water and electricity? Can you even afford pants? Well, what do you mean, new friend? I didn't bring a friend. Is that me he's talking about? Am I the new friend? I didn't ask for this. Well, that, that's it? That, that, that's the whole party? Just this one slide where it looks like my face had an arrangement with the pavement? Oh, I'm restless. I can't deal. I gotta relax. Then get Gonjo with the wind. That wasn't even funny. Ah, right, screw it. Give me a toke. Didn't. Calling the kettle black. If you ever thought of saying I misrepresented it myself? Away from me? You're a coward and a liar and a thief. That guy went to the moon. Thanks for watching JonTron, and if you want to support the show, you can help us out by signing up for a free 30-day trial at audible.com at this link, audible.com slash JonTron. If you sign up right now, you get a free audiobook and you can cancel any time. My recommendation to you this month is Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, narrated by Stephen Fry. He's a funny motherfucker. I mean, this show is really expensive to make. This is a real Egyptian urn. It cost me $20,000. Came with Nefertiti's dead cat inside. Which I'm aware, by the way, that's a steal for the price. Don't forget to subscribe and follow me on Facebook and Twitter. If you want to watch more JonTron, here are some suggestions. And also, the link for audible.com is in the description. See ya!